Before I begin, I want to thank everyone for submitting your questions, because as a result of your questions, it makes this video possible. So let's begin. Joey Amato, although he made a huge mistake with the woman, do you think he was capable of being the boss of the Colombo family? Back in October 2019, the government indicted 20 members and associates of the Colombo family. One of the people indicted was Joey Amato, who was a captain in the family. That case took shape in November 2016, when a GPS tracking device was discovered under a Staten Island bus. Originally, Joey had it under his former girlfriend's car, which when he told me he put it there, I recommended that he remove it. Obviously, he didn't listen. So this woman found it under her car, and either she or someone else placed it under the bus. As far as Joey being a boss, he was a boss. As a captain, you're the boss of a crew. If the opportunity presented itself for him to be the boss of the family, in my opinion, he'd be capable of handling that position. If a friend, which is an inducted member, has to go on a lamb, can he permanently relocate to avoid prosecution? Could he set up an operation from where he's hiding? Who takes care of his business back home? First, if a guy goes on a lamb, that's on him. And it doesn't matter where he relocates. He could try to earn while he's on a lamb, although it's not a good idea to bring attention to yourself when the principle is to avoid law enforcement. As for any business he had going, that would be up to him as who he wants to handle it. What's the political leaning of wise guys? More conservative or liberal? Believe it or not, most guys favor Republicans, which is strange because they're tougher on crime. Back when I was in prison, it was the Republicans who instructed the parole boards not to release people. Why don't wise guys take better security measures, putting phones in Faraday bags, sweep for bugs, and shake surveillance? Faraday or EMP bags helps to block signals to any phone tracking. Are guys using these products today? I have no idea. However, after watching this video, they might start using them. As for counter surveillance or remaining aware of law enforcement tactics, believe it or not, most guys are lazy and become complacent, and that's their downfall. Have any of the families ever put their money to good use? For example, charities, organizations, schools, hospitals, research, etc. I believe Bill Cotolo donated money to certain charities, and possibly other guys do that as well. Mikey Scarola supported the Crohn's Disease Foundation and even participated in some of their walks. My youngest daughter was selling Girl Scout cookies. Most of the guys bought them from her. You mentioned the weirdest racket you ever heard of in the previous Q&A, but what would you say was the biggest money maker? I would have to say the gas scam, obviously not during my time, and I believe the biggest money maker for the mob came during the prohibition. Al Capone alone was said to have made approximately $100 million a year, and this was during the 1920s. So prohibition for the mob made them extremely wealthy. How did Ralph DiMatteo move up so quickly? As I previously mentioned, during my time, Ralphie and I were both soldiers. One of the key factors for Ralphie's quick elevation is the Colombo family was in disarray. Also, it helped that he was close to Andy Mush. But to Ralphie's credit, he had old school values. He wasn't flashy or out on the town every night. So that probably had a lot to do with it. When a maid guy's on parole, what are the mafia rules for being on parole? What can or can't you do? How are you supposed to act towards your parole officer? When a guy's on paper or parole, it's acceptable if he stays away. He don't have to report into his captain. And this is to avoid being violated. What he does on parole is on him because he's the guy that's going to get the violation. And how he treats his parole officer is also on him. When Big John had meetings at his cigar lounge, well, the cigars on the house were full price. I would occasionally get a cigar while I was there and would always pay for it. After all, it was a legitimate business. And if you depended on a free cigar, you were in the wrong life. How was Frank Catley viewed by other families during his time as boss of the Gambinos? Let me just say, there's always debate whether he was actually the boss. Reports, which people on the internet view as gospel, when they're not, had him as an underboss. During my time, Frankie was their guy. He was calling the shots. He was viewed as he carried himself, which was low key. He was hardly mentioned on the street, and that's the way he preferred it. Also, when you think of Frankie Cali, you need to remember who schooled him. For example, the members of the Sicilian faction, the Gambino brothers, the Italian Dom, Lorenzo, and his former captain, Jackie Knows. You talked about Mike DeSantis as a soldier and as an acting boss, but was he ever a captain or in the administration before being acting boss? The answer is no. Mikey wasn't a captain or part of the administration prior to being the acting boss. Sometimes a guy would have to be a captain before getting an administrative position. But in Mikey's case, that decision came from Vic. At one point, Mikey was supposed to be the acting captain of our crew, but that never came to fruition. 
How would the mob make sure a prospective member is a stand-up guy or worthy of being a member? First and foremost would be his reputation, as well as his character as an associate. For instance, does he come when needed? Is he on time? And speaking about time, I never spoke about this before, but in that life, being on time is extremely important. You should always be on time when meeting someone. When an associate's asked to do something, he should always get it done. So it's things like that that play a big part if someone's worthy of being a member. One of the last steps before inducting a member is when that person's name is passed around, not only to the family that might induct them, but to the other four families as well. Why are there so many names for positions within Cosa Nostra? Names of the different positions differentiate who's who. Boss, underboss, consigliere, captain, soldier. Other names or nicknames for those positions came into play throughout the years. Does a boss need to get approval from the commission to whack an, administrator, to whack an administration member? I always get a kick out of when people use that word. Technically, no. But at some point, all murders need a commission approval. This question was in regard to the Bruno Facciola video. How can anyone in that life ever relax? Good question. A member of that life needs to be on his toes at all times. For one, he needs to be conscious of law enforcement. It's their job to put you in prison, and it's to your benefit to make that as difficult as possible for them. You also need to be careful of the traps and treachery that are a big part of that life. So as far as relaxing, you could relax, but you better do so on your toes. I want to quickly mention the super thanks icon underneath this video for anyone who liked to support this channel. And I thank all the people who use it. Thank you. Another question from that same video. If Paul Vario didn't go to jail and die, would Gas Pipe had him whacked? I believe if Paul Vario wasn't in prison and lived longer, he most likely would have been picked to be the boss. The decision to kill certain people came from both Vic and Gas Pipe. This person also said he found it amazing no one attempted to take Gas Pipe out. You have to understand, Gas Pipe was an underboss and one most of the family feared. He was also a guy in the street dealing with the crews. And before he flipped, he was well respected within the family. Have you ever had a legitimate full-time job or was all your income from illegal activities? Up until a certain point, I wasn't working. I went to work at the recommendation of Big John. What most people, especially the peanut gallery clowns don't know, is just about every guy that I knew in the life had a legit job. It's encouraged. You have to be able to show legitimate income. I was a safety supervisor in construction. And as you could see from my resume, I acquired over 25 certifications. On the MTA transit jobs, I became a safety engineer. Then when I moved on to jobs that didn't have to do with the MTA, I was a senior safety supervisor. And I did this with no help from the mob. It was a total legit job. I want to end by thanking everyone for subscribing, both the old and new subscribers, and for all the support, as well as the messages filled with kindness and encouragement. I appreciate it. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend.